Unbelievably, Belgium pulls the upset. Um, I don't have a Belgium jersey. I have a few red jerseys, uh, soccer jerseys, but it just didn't feel right to wear, for instance, an Austria jersey. It's not Belgium. And then the closest thing, at least geographically, after a Belgium jersey is a Netherlands jersey. Also doesn't feel right. So, red hockey jersey that I put on. Uh, see it as a Belgium jersey. Imagine this yellow and we have the Belgium flag here and I think it's a good approximation. Um, before I get to that game, I forgot three things to say in my France video. The first one, uh, and that's the most minor, um, is I lauded Hugo Lory for his great save and his great play. I still find it odd that in this group he's the captain. Uh, he doesn't look to me like a captain. He's not. Um, maybe it's my my personal feeling what a captain should be. Um, you know, someone who's really motivating, pulling the players along. But he seems like a quiet guy. Yes, he has a lot of caps, and I guess this is where it's coming from. But yeah, I was surprised that uh, I'm. I was, and I'm still am surprised that he's the captain. The second thing I was to say was about the referee. Uh, who was from Argentina, which at first seemed weird. You have a South American referee uh, just across the Rio de la Plata from Uruguay. And he's from Argentina, so yeah, for us eliminated Argentina. Doesn't sound, didn't sound quite right, but yeah, I think it works because of the Uruguay-Argentina rivalry that, uh, that the referee could be accepted. and. Given his credentials, um, yeah, it should not really matter too much. I think, unless you put a referee from the same country, I actually think that having referees from just two dif uh, a different countries than the other two participating should be fine overall. And um, Quintana had been refereeing quite well at this World Cup. Yeah, and the last thing was the Jersey matchup that I got right at the last second. Uh, if I wouldn't have read yesterday in the evening that Uruguay is the home team, I would have still, uh, I still would have assumed that France is the home team and I would have been, uh, what's happening here? It made totally sense and we got the matchup that we always get when France plays Uruguay at the World Cup. Look it up. Every game so far, it's Uruguay in the Celeste shirt with black pants and France in white. I think the dark blue would have worked as well but I think it was a nice contrast I just uh, don't like the France shirts if uh, from distance okay from a close-up they look like pajamas there's it's just cloth there with specks but now talk too much about France against Belgium let's uh, France against yeah I will talk a lot about France against Belgium believe me but now let's talk about uh, Brazil versus Belgium I've talked enough about France Uruguay that was an exciting game and it was a game for the most time on a knife's edge I had the feeling um, and it was also a tactical masterstroke by uh, Martinez who kind of caught Brazil a little bit off guard by putting a new formation on them the four on the back and then the three defensive midfielders uh, that kind of messed a little bit with uh, Brazil. Anyway, Brazil started out firing on all cylinders and I thought the Belgium defense will be in for a long day. They looked very shaky in the 10 minutes. I think Silva put the ball at the post. Uh, there were a few other chances where, I mean, it was not real chances, but there was a ball going through and you always felt it was more with the Brazilian and there are three Belgian defenders around it. And um, just by sheer luck, the Brazilian didn't get the shot in. That was the first 10 minutes. And then suddenly you could see the Belgian counter-attack uh, being launched. And it was Fellaini who got in free position. And yet the shot was deflected to a corner. And then at this corner, for the first time, the Brazilian defense was shaken and they made an own goal. A little bit out of the blue, I thought, but yeah, it played right into the cards of Belgium. Uh, they were one nothing up and I thought, yeah, game on. And Brazil came attacking and 
a bedroom a little bit found their footing there with the lead uh, Brazil still was very composed I felt which is a good thing but the Belgians got a little bit a better control of the match and they could launch the counter-attacks and they were deadly this uh, especially everything running over Azar and Lukaku uh, those two players in the first half Azar for the entire game made the game and they made the game of their lives they were running together with the uh, Witzel and Fellaini in the defensive midfield they made the game of their lives in that one and it was so they put the physical effort that Belgium had to put in versus uh, the superior technical players from Brazil this it was an intriguing matchup to watch and then there's another counter that was all Lukaku who already deserves so much credit he hasn't even touched the ball but for the winning goal against Japan Lukaku is binding the defenders and then when he steps dummies over the ball to let uh, Shadli make the uh, winning goal that's a great move absolutely a great move so yeah they make a second goal on the counter they actually there were a few counters before where yeah the Brazilian defenders kind of blocked off Lukaku but this presence of Lukaku really messed with the Brazilian defense they have not faced such a physical striker a physically and somewhat uh, with good technical ability uh, I have to be honest he looks more like a basketball player to me than a soccer player but yeah uh, he was crucial and he had many great moves and the one just ahead of the goal uh, where he gets to uh, through two Brazilian defenders goes ahead pass the ball to De Bruyne who has a man to his right but he takes the shot to nothing and yeah it's I was not sure is Brazil dead and buried now or is there's still a chance and the way it was going I thought Brazil is definitely not out yet but um, Belgium kept it up and they probably could have made it three in the first half if they would have made it three I think Brazil would have been done but with only two there was always hope because you could see that with their ability they could always cause trouble in the Belgian defense and that was the big knife edge that was going there I always had the feeling if Brazil gets a quick goal this match can turn like that and it didn't Brazil came out storming they really put everything on the a Belgian defense that they could and Belgium you could see tired the more and more it went on now there was an appeal for a penalty um, a foul of um, on um, Gabriel Jesus by company yeah um, the first percent where I thought you could see that company is pulling he knows that he's sliding into uh, Jesus so he pulls his foot back but then you can see there is contact there <sighs> since the referee wasn't given the penalty I thought it will not be over this will not be overturned because from what we've seen at the World Cup um, some experts in the TV city of course said this should have been a penalty so this they were wrong at least have the referee look at it um, personally I have to say at that moment I thought and this is totally weird I really wanted I would have been fine if Brazil won that game with everything that the Belgians uh, went in simply for the fact that I thought that the Brazil France matchup that could be a really real firecracker but uh, but I wanted Brazil to struggle and I thought if this they make the goal now um, Belgium will lose three or four two I I just had that feeling so uh, that was my personal feeling um, as, as I said before I really wanted Brazil to really have to work for uh, for something that they are a little bit uh, battle tested um, I was a little bit more on the Belgium side but I would have been happy if Brazil moves on uh, because you never want to lose the most gifted side of the tournament uh, and then having a matchup against the other most, most gifted side of the tournament which was didn't need to exert themselves except for one game uh, that would have made for a hell of a matchup but yeah Belgium held on and then yeah I think there was one where and I gotta mention Neymar once who actually overall behaved himself quite well I gotta say he even there was a um, penalty claim on him where I have to give him a lot of credit for once 
he did not whine he maybe said something to the referee but then he said okay let's move on let's move on let's play let, let's play this is time that we're we gonna lose for that i give him credit he didn't even want to wait until the referee is uh, saying something no he said let's keep on going so neymar that was not the problem and neymar caused some trouble but he was kind of isolated to to the left and um so Belgium really tried to neutralize him as much as you can neutralize him. Even if he had runs, he always had to come in from the left and uh, through the box. Never got a clear uh, shot in, at least for the first 80 or so minutes. Yeah, and then I thought Belgium, yeah, they launched counter, counter attacks, but you can see how much they exerted in themselves. I mean, uh, Azar kept the game alive. I felt Azar was one of the two best players on the pitch uh, he was everywhere he was running he had the ball he could um, control the game he could give a little bit relief to the Belgium uh, Lukaku ran himself into the ground uh, especially in the second half and you could see when they made a counter attack it was not with this precision anymore they, they were absolutely tired and you could see that they were barely hanging on they had just it, it, this, it, this was only will pure will there was nothing else in the in the belgium game anymore this was just will and trying because the bodies didn't want to give it anymore and martinez didn't make any exchange until i think the 80th minute where he wanted to kill off the game with the uh, substitutions a little bit which i've mentioned this is something that i would probably change that if you haven't made a chain ex uh, substitution until the 80th you shouldn't be allowed to do that anymore but i digress so just at the moment when I thought Belgium has this in the back, that Brazil is kind of dejected that they cannot get anything going, Renato Augusto scores. It came out of, out of nowhere and gave Brazil life again. And now with one goal down, if they make the 2-2, Brazil goes on. I'm absolutely convinced. They might even win it in regulation. It was similar to the um, Belgium against um, Japan matchup. Just uh, the opposite. I think if Brazil would have gotten the equalizer, um, at least in overtime, I think Belgium had not much left in them. Uh, they would have won it the latest in overtime, if not already in regulation. But they didn't. Courtois pulled out a few saves during the entire match and kept Belgium in the game. So he was the other hero of that game. And the big save was the one against Neymar towards the end when Neymar finally got a free shot and this would have curled at worst at the crossbar but I think this would have called in and he touches it and yeah there goes Brazil uh, as I said I'm partly sad that I think a Brazil France matchup is always something special but a France Belgium matchup is not that shabby either but yeah so there I'm a little bit sad I'm also sad to lose kind of the most talented side on the other side it's again uh, Typical Brazilian fans, you could see in the stands, they're all, yeah, we're going to win the sixth cup, we have already the trophy and so on. Whereas the Belgian ones have the, uh, the trophy with a uh, form of beer instead of the uh, world or the globe. So, and then you can see the poor frustration in their eyes. I always have to think, yes, mission was to win it. I understand that. But I think um, this Brazilian team was actually quite stable overall. Yes, they were missing probably Casemiro to have a little bit more physical presence in midfield. I think this was sorely missed. But that was probably the real pro the, the only real problem for, for Brazil. The rest, they played well. They have consolidated. This is a Brazil team that would have a future unless they fire now Chichi which I really ho hope they do not, because there is, Brazil should have hope. Four years ago, they, they were down and buried, and then they got Donga back in a move that I still don't understand. But they got back, and I think, give it a little bit more time, this Brazil team can really, really be dangerous. As for Belgium, I said it before, um, I'm, I'll be very curious to see the French team looked that they didn't exert themselves much today. This was an absolute mature performance by the French. I think they didn't uh, put in much, they didn't have to put in much effort to beat Uruguay today. Uh, the game went all in their favor. 
whereas Belgium had to put everything on the line right there. Um, I don't think that Meunier, although he had a good game, uh, is that crucial of a miss, but you, who knows, he might have played against Mbappé today. He was playing all against uh, Neymar and he did a very, very good job. But yeah, I'll be interested to see that if that plays anything in it. I honestly think even if Belgium makes it to the final, I don't think they have much power left in the final. Uh, and it might go as well like the 2006 final where you could see that Italy had all the power for 60 minutes and then they were just dragging until they got to penalties. Um, because they spent an extremely, extreme amount of energy in an, a very intense game against Germany a few days prior. So I'll be curious to see Belgium against France from that perspective. Um, if they were rested, this would be a great matchup in itself. But I think that France probably could kill this off. Jersey matchup, I love to see it. Both first jerseys, yellow against red, uh, South America against a classic European shirt. Um, so that looked uh, really good, I thought. And it always amazes me that Brazil, with three different colors for shirt, pants and socks, can mostly manage to play in those. Where other teams, like France, that play in three different, usually cannot. Just something to interest. So. And to finish this off, let's do the honors. Brazil. The first Brazil shirt. And this was probably, I think this is my third soccer shirt ever. And also my second national team shirt. I bought it after the 94 World Cup. Now this is not the original Umbro, as it will be easy to uh, say it's Tro standing for Trophy, which was an Austrian brand that made replicas of replicas. Um, so therefore it's not the original, but it's actually quite close. It has the Brazil on the back. I really would like to get the original, but it still has the printing. It looked very close to that, but not the one thing. And that's why I thought this was all special. It, at the World Cup in 94, Brazil was a three-time world champion. So they have three CBF crests with the three stars on front. But here I got the four stars already, and that was what I wanted to get back then. Yes, it's not the original. I still like to wear that one. It has bright colors and it wears well. Of course, I want to get the original Umbro. And then my other Brazil shirt, just because this was never the original, I needed to get a new one, and it seemed like the perfect time was the World Cup 2014. <laughs> I really wanted to get the one for the Confederations Cup in 2013. That was a perfect Brazil shirt with a nice color and so on. But this one's also nice. I even got used to the Y color that they have here. It looks like a classic Brazil shirt. I want to have a Brazil shirt, a nice color uh, with the green, everything else in blue, and then the sleeve cuffs also in green. I think they did a very good job here. We have an enlarged Brazil crest. The Brazil is missing here, was missing for the World Cup, and also like the bird of paradise right in the, or the canary bird, I think it is. I actually really like this shirt um, and that was also a shirt where I looked at both the authentic and the replica and I decided for the replica because it's nicer to wear the authentic uh, with all the holes it was a very tight fit it just didn't look right on me uh, and I like this one this is more like a regular shirt so I have a few authentic player jerseys but the Nike one that was so tight fitting it's just not for me I still prefer them to be loose yeah, and little did I know that they will lose in this for 7-1 to Germany. I still wear it. Well, let me know what you thought about this game. I think it was one of the most intriguing games. Not the best, but it was one of the most intriguing. It kept me on the edge for the entire game. And I hope it did the same for you. Let me know in the comments what you thought about it and I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.